Well, hey guys, it's Michael here. Welcome back to part 11 of the 420cc Predator powered mini articulating dump truck build. In this episode, we actually start building some roll for protection, ROPS, add a roof to it. Still have a little bit more bracing to do on the, the actual roll cage of this thing, but it's much better than it has been. We start skinning the sides of it and actually add a nice toolbox and build a really cool toolbox tray for it. And behind me here, I don't want to reveal it, but actually came up with the name with this thing, worked with my friend and she designed a nice logo. Thank you, Julie, for that. So at the end of the video, I'll reveal the name and the logo on this thing. So stick around and enjoy the video, guys. All right, so working on the roll protection inside the cab work here, I pretty much cut these uprights extra long so I could play around with height. Basically, I had them up four inches higher and because the vehicle is very small, having a roomy cab is kind of out of the question because uh, it makes it look awkwardly tall. So I'm gonna kind of play around with heights. I'm a smaller dude, so this will work pretty good for me. I think it gives me about four to six inches above my head for interior roof space. And uh, I'm gonna cut these down a little shorter, weld them on. This will be the easy part. I'm working from easy to more complicated because I mentioned that in the other video. That's kind of how I work through things. Uh, the more complicated location is going to be up here because as a steering wheel overhangs, I knew I had to make the windshield sit somewhere up here right behind the hood. But I got these 45s. So I'm going to have to come up with some clever ways to box this in. And the cab is going to extend out another two inches. So we'll figure that out when we get down to it. Here's 
here's a quick little tip if you guys happen to have one of these metal cutting band saws. Mine was bought used and the gauge, the degree gauge on the side was just ripped up. It's not very good. It's just a little aluminum gauge that's been riveted on and it's all bent up. So what I do is if I want to make a nice 90 degree cut, I put this little adjustable square in here, bring the saw down, line it up with it and tighten down the clamp. It's uh, really accurate for a 90 degree cut here, so I can verify that. Then once I get it set, I can take a little scribe and scribe it down the bed of it, just to leave a nice little groove in there. But I actually prefer to take a little three-sided file and file a little notch in the edge of the, the bed. It's just a simple reference point. The scribes can only cut so deep on there, so a little notch is a little better for me. I have another notch at 22 and a half degrees because I'm actually doing my 45s at 22 and a half degrees for the roll protection here. And I got another scribe mark at uh, 45 degrees, kind of common ones you use. Just a little tip on these saws. All right, let's get cutting. All right, you guys, had a little delay on this project. I had to order some metal and it was about a week out. So I got some more metal to finish up the, mainly the roll protection for the cab. And then I can start skinning it with some aluminum. So I got some more aluminum as well. And earlier in the video, I said we're gonna deal with some weird stuff up in this range. So I'm gonna start tackling this now. Basically, I gotta do some uprights here. I'm gonna fill the gaps uh, on the frame here with just some like stick on adhesive kind of like car sealing around doors. I think that'll be just fine. But basically, I need the window to sit out in front of the steering wheel here, but right behind the hood, this is just a scrap piece of metal I have here, but the cab's gonna have to stick out over this. I should be able to get to the hood releases. I mean, I could relocate those if I have to, but it's gonna have to overhang around here for a nice big window to sit up here. It's gonna be a little strange. Hopefully I can style it in and make it look right. Who knows, maybe if worse comes worse, I put the hood lasher down here and put some little uh, LED lights for extra illumination up front. Blend in the imperfections. All right, let's get finishing this thing up. Thank you. 
All right, so I'm totally new to that swag off-road box brake. It's an awesome tool. I really wish I would have bought it years ago. It's a, definitely a good investment to have in my shop. But basically, I'm kind of new to it, so I'm figuring out my bends, and I think this part worked out. What I did was I took a little piece of aluminum TIG rod. I want a little half-inch gutter on the side here. I'm going to do three of these panels to make up the whole roof. I have a bunch of salvaged aluminum. And so I just bent it to the profile of the roof and used this as my profile for my bend. For my bend here. And I was able to map it out pretty well. Keep in mind, I left these gutter points long right now just because I wasn't how, sure how short I could get in that bender and bend a 90 degree. So I'm going to cut them down to about half an inch. I think it should work out pretty well. I'm going to make three of these panels and do a little eyebrow overhang over the front window as well to kind of match the hood. And I'm going to do a little bump out here on the back of the back window to give the cab a little more room. But that little swag box break is awesome. It's well worth checking out. All right, gonna bust out the spool gun to do a little bit of tack welding on the roof there. Should be pretty good. All right, you guys, got the roof off the tractor, and because it's salvaged aluminum, it's got some drill holes in it, I need to go through, I'm just gonna take in the little holes. I don't really care cosmetically how the spool gun welds in look the best on the roof. As long as it's sealed off, that's fine, but these gutters, I'm gonna go back through where you can visually see them and TIG weld all those. Speaking of TIG welders, Yes Weld sent me this TIG 250P, and I've been trying this thing out. It's aluminum AC-DC TIG machine. I got about four and a half, five hours in on it so far. Uh, about 20 hours or so into it, I'll probably do a little review video on that. So keep an eye out down the road for that video. All right, let's get TIG welding. Well, all right, I got some of the roll protection up above painted out black and I painted and finished off the welding on the roof here. I still have a lot more to do on this cab, but we got this thing out of the shop right now so I can actually do some firewood hauling. I actually helped my friend recently with firewood processing and in return, I got a bunch given to me as well. So we're gonna haul about a half a quart up to my cabin and a few trips with this. So let's get using the, the little articulating truck. So I'm not sure what the neighbor's running over here. Sounds like a lawnmower when it starts to run properly, but right now it sounds like a hit and miss motor from like 1910. I don't know what he's got going. Sounds like some car problem. Of course, as soon as I go to do any filming where I'm talking earlier, airplanes are flying overhead like crazy and that thing fires up and usually the way it goes, but whatever. So got about actually half the bed load of wood in here. So that's pretty good. With some stake sides, I could probably bring this thing up even higher and haul more. I'll pack this over to the woodshed.
way nicer than pushing wheelbarrow loads of wood around the trails over here. Good system. Got some firewood hauled with this thing today, two loads, and I actually got two more to do tomorrow in the morning. Back in the shop now, we're gonna actually take some aluminum, that salvage uh, snowboard molds that I have, and skin this thing. Use the figure brake to bend it around the corners here. And I got a uh, really cool ammo box I'm gonna use as a roll around toolbox on the outside of this. Let me find that real quick. So here it is. I ordered this online. It was like 25 bucks, all rubber gasketed. I have a smaller version on my quad truck. Works really well for keeping tools in. And because I got such a limited amount of space, I don't want to put it in here. And it's just going to be more functional outside the machine anyways. So it's going to go on here and it uh, should be pretty good. Got those two bends complete. Wouldn't you know, in the middle of the process or starting the process on the second bend, the camera battery died. So I wasn't able to show you guys that. But I got this bent. There's gonna be two sheets of this, one on the bottom, one on the top, and it seemed to be a pretty good fit. I'm happy with it. Fit something like this. And it's gonna get screwed down there a little better, but basically two sheets around here. This side's gonna be closed with an ammo box. The other side's where I'm gonna enter and exit the vehicle. That's gonna be where the door is. These rib nuts have been super useful on this build. Rest of the skin of all the aluminum is gonna be held on with rib nuts, just in case I wanna take off a panel and do something. Just make it a little easier to make it removable like that. Time to use one of my favorite tools in the shop, my CNC. I got a little thing drawn out for an ammo box holder for the big toolbox on the side, so we'll go cut this next. So this aluminum I'm gonna cut here is salvaged from an old snowboard mold, and it's really warped up, maybe three eighths of an inch, teeter totters. So I got shimmed up with some aluminum. I'm gonna be really using the torch I can tool a lot on this piece, but it should be no problem. Not bad for scrap. box all bent up. I ran into one problem here. These inches, these sides are uh, two inches tall. And basically when this thing would bend up, this side would start hitting this brace up here. And I don't have any longer fingers for it, which I'm actually going to build some longer ones and machine them on my mill. But I end up just cutting this piece of angle iron, basically setting in the trough and taking up the distance and actually fold it up just fine. Uh, I definitely but haven't used this tool that much, so I'm getting my techniques down. This corner is not going to be bad to fill on the front here. I bent those pretty good. The back side is going to take a little bit more of a miracle. It's over a quarter inch, so um, I've only been welding aluminum for about a year and a half with a TIG welder. So I'll probably go down, fill one side, fill the other side, and then fill the center. We'll see if I can get it. i also make it worse. It's uh, really old salvage aluminum, which has a lot of dirt worked into it and mold release and stuff. Oh. One other thing I want to mention, I got some Mike Vestiva shirts up now and some sweatshirts down below. A wide range of colors. I like the blue and white one myself, but check them out. Maybe think about ordering one, guys. All right, let's get welding.
It's gonna be an awesome toolbox for this machine. All right, the video's getting a little long, but I want to add one more detail before I wrap this one up. So hold on a second. All right, so here's the logo. I really like it. Thanks again, Julie, for helping me design this. So AMT is pretty simple, articulated mini truck. The 1240, 12 horsepower, which it is, 40 for the four-wheel drive. And I called it the mountain goat because it is rugged like a goat. Packs things around, gets great traction everywhere. Uh, nice little mountain range up here and a goat. Now this goat is the same as the goats found in the Olympic Mountains, which are right behind my place. And they are also found in the Rocky Mountain Range. They're actually not a goat. They're actually more of a sheep, but people call them mountain goats. And if you ever come across these things, they stand quite tall. And you come across them, they're kind of intimidating if you're up in the mountains, you know, way up on a ridge top, and you come across a pack of these things. But they are robust. And uh, so I felt it was kind of fitting for this machine. It gets great traction, and it's pretty stout. So hope you guys enjoyed the sticker and uh, enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider subscribing, give a thumbs up, and leave a comment down below. I'd appreciate that. If you guys subscribe, there's a lot more cool series coming up. I'm actually getting everything ready for this fall to finish this one up and actually start on a really rugged side-by-side. -side. It's going to be more of a fun toy for than a work vehicle. So that's going to be a really fun series I'm looking forward to. All right, you guys, thanks so much for checking out the video. Take care. Bye.